time was short. Great Britain and France were already at war. The inevitable entry of the United States was accepted. Fear of German research stimulated activity in the United States and in England. One reason for the decision to concentrate forces against the Germans was recognition that German scientists could produce weapons of great devastation. The scientific competence of this foe was never doubted. Comparable peril from Japanese science did not exist. Early in the war, Allied intelligence had disclosed that Germany was increasing production of heavy water in the famous Norwegian hydroelectric plants at Ryukon and Bemork. These plants also produced vitally needed ammonia. The Nazi war regime was using heavy water for uranium research and also to improve the financial position of the Reich. Just before the invasion of Norway, the French government had purchased virtually the entire world stock of heavy water. At the time of the fall of France in June 1940, Joliot had sent 165 liters of the water to England. This heavy water, which twice had nearly fallen into German hands, permitted vital experiments to be conducted later at the Cavendish Laboratory, research which aided the Allies immeasurably. In the winter of 1942-43, with heavy loss of life, patriotic Norwegian saboteurs and British commandos wrecked equipment in the plants, and the Army Air Force did a neat job of strategic bombing which left the plants crippled. Meanwhile, a ferry carrying heavy water bound for Germany was sunk. German scientists made great strides in nuclear research, just as they had in aerodynamics and in rocket warfare. Their conception of an atomic bomb was an atomic pile guided out of control. They worked hard, but when the war ended, they still had not succeeded in creating a self-sustaining pile. They overlooked the use of a three-dimensional lattice and the role of fast neutrons in achieving detonation. They produced no plutonium. When Strasbourg fell, German atomic documents were recovered and a few physicists captured. Strategic circles then learned that vaunted German progress had lagged behind our own. News of the bomb drop at Hiroshima was a shocking surprise to intern German physicists. They had believed that construction of an atomic engine must precede a workable bomb and that without German help, no bomb could be built. In June 1940, President Roosevelt organized the National Defense Research Committee. The Uranium Committee became a part of this group, reporting to Dr. Vannevar Bush. As Dean Pegram returned from a survey of British atomic research, Dr. Bush and the National Defense Research Committee determined on an all-out effort to develop an atomic bomb. Chadwick and the other physicists agree entirely with us that given pure uranium-235, we can make a bomb that will work. I'm going to see the president tomorrow. I'm sure that he will agree that the job has got to be done and that we'll get the support that we need. Pearl Harbor had plunged the United States into war. An effective partnership of scientists, engineers, industrialists, and the military was formed. Work in universities and independent research laboratories was coordinated. Manhattan Engineer District, a new branch of the Army's Corps of Engineers, was established to administer work on military uses of uranium. Major General Leslie R. Groves was placed in charge of all activities of the project. The end of 1942 was a critical period. On December 2nd, the first self-sustaining chain reacting pile was successfully operated at the University of Chicago. On that day, without fanfare, far from the field of battle, the atomic age loomed upon the threshold of history. This success galvanized authorization for construction of the great Clinton diffusion plant at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the giant plutonium producing plant on the Columbia River at Hanford, Washington. Now the task assumed tremendous proportions in expenditure and effort. The expense was staggering, the obstacles gigantic, the possibility of failure ever present. Development of the atomic bomb eventually cost $2 billion. Scaled against the cost of total war, this figure loses magnitude. When the second bomb was dropped, the war had cost the United States $286,748,000,000. 
the daily cost of continuing the war was roughly $213 million. The plants at Hanford and Oak Ridge took form rapidly. The Oak Ridge pile started operating on November 4th, 1943. The first of three piles at Hanford began operation in September 1944. The Oak Ridge plants were designed to concentrate U-235 by different methods. U-235 is one of the five known isotopes of uranium. The Hanford plant was the source of that new man-made element, plutonium. Activity progressed at fever pitch. Problems, ugly, difficult, seemingly insuperable problems appeared. By dint of concerted effort, they were solved. As we look back now, what was accomplished appears as day-to-day -day miracles on a production line. At the time, it was work, 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 and more work. The first atomic bomb was assembled at Los Alamos, a secret laboratory in New Mexico. Scientific equipment was first obtained from universities and research projects. New equipment, built to specification, soon made Los Alamos the best equipped physics laboratory in the world. When Dr. J.R. Oppenheimer arrived in March 1942 to take charge, he began to surround himself with a galaxy of outstanding scientific stars. The roster included many of the recognized leaders in modern day physics and technical specialists from all parts of the world not then under enemy control. Sir James Chadwick headed an array of top British physicists at Los Alamos, and this group made invaluable contributions to technique and design. Professor J.D. Cockcroft, first to split the lithium atom in 1932, was another British consultant who gave vast help. Niels Bohr, one of the modern giants in physical science, made himself available after his escape from Denmark via Sweden. From Los Alamos came the bomb design and treatment of many theoretical problems. Measurements of the nuclear constants were refined and extended. Methods for purifying materials to be used were developed. Finally, in July 1945, a practical bomb was completed. This, briefly, is the history of the development of the atomic bomb. It was the harvest of science from many centuries harnessed to the concentrated efforts of the greatest gathering of scientific brains ever assembled in one group with a single objective. When these men on July 16, 1945, exploded the first bomb in the Trinity test at Alamogordo, they were not releasing upon an unsuspecting world a weapon of unknown potentialities. The power of the bomb had been predicted within close limits by careful calculations, and while the explosion definitely was greater than the average expectation, it did remain within the calculated limits. Military weapons dependent upon nuclear energy were now and henceforth an inescapable reality. Energy released by explosion of one atomic bomb of the type used at Nagasaki is roughly equivalent to that generated by exploding 20,000 tons of TNT. 20,000 tons. 40 million pounds of TNT would fill two good-sized cargo ships. Yet, all this energy was contained in one bomb. Nor is this all. In the early stages, the explosion reaches a temperature unmatched except inside the stars. The light radiated from its surface can produce burns well beyond the dangerous range of blast alone. During the burst, there are radiations traveling at tremendous speeds and invisible to the eye that reach even those protected by tile and concrete walls or metal shields. These are gamma rays and neutrons that penetrate and kill with insidious efficiency. Danger persists after the blast has died away. Lethal materials, fission products and the dregs of the bomb float about over the debris and beyond it. These exist in quantities equivalent in radiation to hundreds of tons of radium. Where they settle, is death. These radium-like products give the atomic bomb its greatest deadliness. Under favorable conditions, they may last years or even centuries in dangerous amounts. 